Welcome to the Quantum Alignment Show. I'm your guest host, Elaine Correa, and I'm here to talk to you today about the life cycles of a projector. I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be able to share my insights about what it means to be a projector and the challenges that we face. I'd love to hear your comments and, you can, and your questions, and you can feel free to post them uh, in the chat. So this has been my baby. I have been working on this for a number of years, and I'm writing a whole series of them. So it wasn't easy to get to this point because I had to overcome all sorts of self-doubt and not feeling good enough and bending over backwards to people and, and not rocking the boat. I didn't want to, to reveal myself through writing. The, I always put other people first. And so my writing project got postponed, delayed, just uh, set aside quite a few times. But I am so glad that I listened to my soul's calling and have followed through with and taken the actions and gone up against the naysayers and the people who said, you better not quit your job and you're, you're a fool for writing your book and there's something wrong with you for all these things that I wanted to do that was against their agenda. So, but it has brought me so much joy and filled me with so much life and passion and zest for what is to come. And through the writing of my characters, I have learned what has become possible for me. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. Have you noticed how when you're not interested in doing something, you don't have the energy for it? Allow me to tell you how I came to this point of being able to write my book and to this point of feeling satisfied and fulfilled in my life. And what I learned along the way. Perhaps it'll make sense to you. I hope it makes sense to you. And will inspire you on your journey of awakening to your particular role that will bring you the greatest satisfaction and joy in your life. That first slide is always the hardest to get going. So, it starts with your soul's agenda. We are born into this world for many reasons. But the primary ones have to do with growing and evolving ourselves as an individual fragment of the divine and also expanding the divine as a whole. We come with an agenda. Our soul wants to experience certain themes such as love, joy, truth, pleasure, relationships. Our soul has certain traits that it is specialized in to experience these themes. For example, one person may experience the theme of pleasure from the perspective, the soul energy perspective of love, or they may experience the same energy from the aspect of truth or from power. So you can see that there are variations in the way one particular theme can play out for different people. So these themes are broad and it's very hard as an individual to know, well, how do I fit in with this. And so there's lots of ways that pleasure can play out in one's life. So luckily, the, the clues are contained in our natal birth charts that will help to narrow the focus so that we have the tools and we know kind of a, more of a direction of where we are going. But it takes time and years often to decipher and accept where we are going and why and what we are doing, and to understand the tools that we have to use to fulfill our, our life purpose. So many of us are here at this time because the planet has a great need for us. We are here to change the paradigm of the consciousness of our world. Each of us has an individual talent that we are bringing to the task. Do you have a deep urge to do something that will make a difference? Way back when I studied iridology, Dr. Jensen made a statement that stuck with me for years. He said, people with weaker constitutions learned at a young age how to take care of themselves and often lived a long and healthy life. In contrast, 
those who had robust constitutions that could eat anything, work long hours, smoke, drink, eat poorly, and do all sorts of things for years, then their body would break down and they would become sick and not have a very healthy long life. It's harder for this person to shift to more healthy habits because they will say, it's always worked before, why change now? That's the way you know many people think. But it becomes the difference between treating the body as a tool as a re or as a respected, carefully tended temple. This concept can be applied to energy types. Variable energy people thrive when they are more conscious about their energy reserves and their resources. The sustainable energy types can get away with more for a while. Ultimately, as one ages, how one has lived their life will determine the later years. It's never too late to wake up and take new actions. This presentation focuses on the projector, but applies to the other types as well. And I have chosen to use the pronoun, the feminine pronoun, but it does not exclude any of the other genders. Through observation and talking with projector clients who are on their soul's path, I came to the conclusion that projectors have a life cycle. Truth is, we all go through these phases, but the projector has a particular theme. I'd like to introduce you to this concept and offer a new way to see yourself and understand the projectors around you. Much like the three evolutionary stages of the sixth line profile, I believe the projector goes through something similar. Typically, a person with the sixth line profile experiments for the first 30 years, then takes about a 20 year period to integrate what they have learned before they step into walking their talk as a role model. In a similar cycle, the projector learns about energy. Their evolutionary journey is learning to understand their energetic nature and how to manage it wisely. This means shifting from self-doubt and unworthiness to loving and appreciating their unique role in the world. I see this as three different distinct life cycles, the misunderstood years, the crucible years, and the age of wisdom. And you finally figure it all out. So we'll talk about the misunderstood years. The first phase includes roughly the first 30 years of life. The projector child, who is someone who does not have a defined sacral center or consistent energy, begins to realize he or she is different. If her parents don't understand her, even judge and berate her for being sickly, tired, or lazy, this lays the foundation for attendant emotions and belief systems that go along with that. She works hard to fit in, to be normal, but the seeds of doubt are planted and grow. She feels her parents' misunderstanding and disapproval. Her struggles stem from not having sustainable energy and instead having a variable life force. Generally speaking, young projectors can almost keep up with those that have more sustainable life force energy. They borrow from their friends or siblings. They can be a superstar on the track, on the playground or playing with friends. They can really push the bubble, but then they crash and burn and may not go out for a day or two or until they are recharged. If they keep pushing, then something will happen that will cause them to have to take a time out. That could look like getting sick, a cold, an upset stomach, or they could fall down and hurt, hurt themselves or some sort of an injury or anything that forces a time out. This regular apparent unluckiness can cause them to wonder if there's something wrong with them. Their friends are out playing every day while they're sick with a cold or an earache. It's not fair. When a projector gets older and goes to school, she may find that she can't keep up with her friends. Her friends do things after school, are involved in clubs and sports and do things on weekends. A projector tween stays home and has to rest on the weekend instead of going places and doing things. And if she pushes, she may end up sick. It's strange how her body just 
doesn't seem to be as resilient and healthy as other people. It raises questions like, why can't I do things like everyone else? Some days, a projector is a superstar. When she tries something, the next time, she can't do it. She's exhausted, and she fails and feels like a fool, and kids are not always supportive and understanding. So she asks, why am I so tired? Why can't I do things like everyone else? Does this sound familiar? A child sees their parents as a role model and, and wants to be like them, mostly. If the, if the projector child is raised in a household with parents and siblings that have sustainable em energy and is empathic to boot, the contrast between her and the rest of her family can be amplified. Managing variable energy in this, in this sustainable energy dominant world is tricky, especially for a young person. Social pressure makes her want to be like everyone else, to fit in and be accepted. This can foster all sorts of beliefs about oneself and one's worthiness and lovability and value. Even as youngsters, projectors read people's energies instinctively. They know what needs to be done, but often adults discount their wisdom and override their ideas. Over time, the projector child shuts down or rebels, depending on her nature. It's difficult to make blanket statements because each person comes with a unique combination of traits and elements. One person can respond to their childhood experiences by pushing against authority, being outspoken, noisy, and a troublemaker. Another person can react by withdrawing, becoming sickly, and hiding in a, in a book or a fantasy world. Both are expressions of the same underlying theme, the need to be recognized, accepted, and appreciated for who they are the need to be recognized. Everyone needs to be recognized, but projectors along with open-throated people need to be specifically acknowledged and recognized for them to thrive and be able to express themselves. They need other people to provide the energy to be heard. If recognition is denied or they are ignored, misunderstood, or their wide wor wise words overruled, they can experience a significant blow to their sense of worthiness and role in the world. In this first phase of a projector's life cycle, a projector doesn't understand that they are designed to be different. Automatically, they know what needs to be done and want to direct people. They know how things should go together. Depending upon the details of their design, they may be very technically oriented, artistic, know how things are supposed to go. However, they can't go out and work every day. Projectors do better working in spurts, project-based. However, the more sustainable types point fingers and say, oh, that person is lazy. They don't wanna work. There's something wrong with them because they can't do what I do. If a teacher or parent says this, it has deep impact and devastates any sense of self-worth and self-value. The projector makes it through the childhood and school years wrestling with her self-image. She keenly knows she's different, but she doesn't know why. She thinks it's a flaw. It's embarrassing. And she does everything she can to hide her perceived weakness, pretending it doesn't exist. She pushes, pretending to be like everyone else. She can get away with it through her, through her 20s. Then during that time, she'll do more than she is physically capable of and expend more energy than can be adequately replaced. This is the first phase of, ener of the energy life of a projector. Around 28 or 30, Saturn returns to the position it was when, at the time of birth. It's called a Saturn return. Saturn is a planet associated with the taskmaster, with responsibility and moving forward with a plan. A Saturn return is akin to a life evaluation by one's mentors, 
Saturn asks, what have you learned? Where is your life going next? What significant events happened for you when you turned 30? The crucible years. Life flows along a continuum and around 30, a person shifts and almost unconsciously evolves into another phase of their life that will last for the next 10 or 20 years. This period can be difficult and moves the projector unerringly towards a recognition of their vital nature. Usually at this time, a person has a career, is raising a family or both. She may be in a relationship with a partner, be taking kids to school events, working, tending to the home and all the details of life. This intense level of activity now makes her younger years look easy. As we age, our differences become more glaring. It is a time when the unaware projector has to learn about themselves and redefine their role in life. However, it is a process. Having the energy to work becomes a struggle. When the unaware projector was younger, she was able to do this easily, more easily. Having a children Having children, a career, a partner, all take a toll on her vitality. She needs her job to support herself and her family. She relies on caffeine and energy drinks. She pushes and pushes to prove she's worthy, but inside she doesn't think so. Something has to be done. I call this the crucible years. This is a time when a projector doesn't really understand who she is. Factors cause her to question herself, her life, her worth. If she continues to not be valued and recognized or be heard, she starts into a slump where she doesn't think she is worthy or very important. The outside world reflects her beliefs about herself. During this time of life, she becomes super mom, juggling career, kids, partner, life, and everything else. But her energy is fickle. One day it's fine. The next, she's exhausted and struggles to get through her day. She's faced with a dilemma. Struggle to retain the life she has known, do the work, her job that she's done, hang out with friends, be the mate she was when she first got into her relationship, tend to her children, or change. Quit her job, get some help at home, stop doing all the activities, and the social life and the volunteering. Over the course of her life, she has systematically denied herself because she has been taught not to be selfish. She feels guilty about letting people down and she doesn't wanna rock the boat with her friends, her partner or her children. She has an inner conundrum. She deals with it by drinking more coffee and energy drinks, pushing herself to keep up. She goes to the doctor to find out why she's so tired she takes herbs and supplements to support her energy. She's driven by the need to be accepted. And if she changes and starts taking time for herself to rest and recharge, to sleep alone, which she usually goes over like a lead balloon with her partner, to be alone, she is afraid she will be rejected or people will get angry with her and she will be letting people down. She burns the candle at both ends, pressured by the need to prove she is worthy. If she has a supportive mate who helps out with the daily chores and a flexible work schedule, it is easier for her to cope. And that is a good first step. Eventually, a projector reach a point, reaches a point where her life comes to a screeching halt, usually with an accident or illness. This is a cosmic wake up, a cosmic wake -up call. Some people around her may not understand and call her lazy and tell her there's something wrong with her. She already knows that. They say she's crazy to quit her job and many other things. Often it is because they are doing, they're used to her doing things for them and for her being the super mom and the coworker, super coworker. Does this sound like something you've experienced in your life? This is a light language symbol for healing and releasing blocks. Just allow yourself to absorb it and let it do its magic on you.
It's part of the healing process, the transformation process of moving from the crucible years into your fulfillment years. I've talked to a lot of young projectors in this age group, around 30-ish, that think, and it's really interesting because they may know all about variable energy, but they think they can do whatever they want to do and keep up with their generator counterparts. But are they really fooling themselves? A projector goes through these years trying to be as productive as she can. However, the more she pushes with energy that she doesn't have, the faster things come up short. It's called burnout. Pretty soon, life is no longer meaningful. She really doesn't want to go to work. And pretty soon, her, begins, her kids become annoying. This scares her. She just doesn't have the energy to take them to the ball game at, with their friends. She may have to work because she needs the money. She has to start prioritizing more visits to the doctor who may prescribe antidepressants and tell her she has chronic fatigue. But she needs her job and she wants to be seen as a good mother. Something usually happens to get one's attention. The cosmic wake up call usually starts in the early 40s with the shift in the lunar nodes and the urge to step into one's life purpose. Another subtle shift happens when Chiron returns to his natal position around age 50. With Chiron, comes the urge to heal life patterns, especially those that aren't working, and share that wisdom with others. She begins to realize she needs to manage her energy. Out of sheer fatigue, she just can't say yes to everything. She just can't push her way through things like she used to. She starts to become smarter and wiser. She still has to deal with self-worth and being valuable, appreciated, and recognized. That's a constant theme throughout her whole life cycle. In time, and with some inner exploration, she begins to realize that maybe she has a different role than other people in the world. The Savi projector will start to evaluate where she's been and what she's done, take a look at her life, and start investigating into what are the alternatives. She begins to figure out how to live the rest of her life in more harmony. This can be a very lonely time as she learns about herself and takes the time to rest and heal. Those around her may or may not understand what she's going through. It is really important that she be supported through this critical period so that she can make the transitions she needs to not only survive, but thrive. This is a self-worth activation. Driven by a rebellious body, the projector finally acknowledges she's not a workhorse. She learns she is designed to be the overseer and guide others in getting things done. Slowly, she rebuilds her belief about herself as she heals and regains her energy. This requires sometimes drastic acts of love. She shifts from doing for others for, to doing for herself. This means saying no often made more difficult by if you have the gates 29, 50, or 27 activated, either divine, defined, or if you're playing out the energies of others in those gates. And then there's always money concerns, compounded by a reduced earning ability due to lack of energy, not valuing herself enough to speak up and ask for better wages. The ability to say no to others' wants and needs, and yes to herself, requires that she shift her perceptions about herself. The key to walking her talk as a projector lies in understanding and appreciating the gifts inherent in her variable energy. It's a slow back and forth healing process. The more she appreciates the gift of variable energy, uh, the more she loves and value herself, and the more she will say no to things that deplete her. She learns to read and, read and manage her energy. The more she pays attention to herself, the more she heals and the cycle repeats until on a upward spiral of healing. She has to overcome social beliefs 
We are taught, especially as women, to put others' needs before our own. And if we take care of our own needs, we are being selfish. With the exception of narcissistic people, tending to our own needs is an act of self-love. It is the process of activating self-love and self-nurturing that brings about healing and revitalization. The age of wisdom and the fulfillment years. It's a big step into the next phase where a projector begins to realize that they are specifically designed for a particular purpose, not only to expand and grow and evolve themselves as an individual, but for a bigger purpose. I call this the wisdom years, the age of wisdom. This phase is about reclaiming her personal power, understanding and managing her energy and stepping into a bigger role in her life. It takes a lot of personal work to be able to say no to someone or to, or to an offer to do something you don't want to do, but it's imperatively important to do that. The projector discovers she has a fantastic inner authority, her energy. If something feels enlivening, joyful, and fills her with vitality, that is something to say yes to. If the invitation feels neutral or she becomes tired just thinking about it, she pays attention to the messages of her body and declines the offer. Listening to the body becomes a reliable tool for the projector. During this phase, she nurtures her most valuable resource, her energy. She hones her ability to listen to her body and manages her energy so that she has the resources for when she has something that she wants to do and that is meaningful to do. Unsustainable energy can seem like a dilemma and like a limitation, but actually it is a great gift and a personal, perfect vehicle for personal growth. This is a self love and trust activation. The projector starts to appreciate herself and understands her peculiarities. She has discovered that before she can really be recognized, loved, and appreciated by anyone else, she has to appreciate herself first and embrace her uniqueness. That starts by accepting who she is, how she engages with the world, and where she is on her personal journey. Start right now. The mature projector moves forward with her life and reaches a balance by learning to manage her energy, even though people still push on her and say there's something wrong with her when she tells them no. She has the courage and fortitude to trust she is doing what is in her highest good. She cherishes herself and her energy. The people around her who are used to her always saying yes to their wishes and putting their needs first don't understand. They can get angry and manipulated, even abusive, she gives up her role as a super worker, as a super mom, super co-worker. And despite what people say, she knows she has to take care of herself or she will not survive, much less thrive. She recognizes she has her own purpose, her own life path, and other people have theirs. She honors and loves herself by taking care of herself first. Only then does she have the energy and the interest to serve others. This actually applies to all types. As we get into the second Saturn return in the late 50s and the later years, we become more discerning about what is actually in our best and highest interest and what is not, what is nurturing and supporting and what is not. Ideally, the wise projector turns their talent to of managing and directing others onto themselves and direct their own lives in the most effective and efficient way. One gift a projector has, and especially an empathic one, is of understanding people and their energy. Projectors are energy movers. They understand the patterns of energy flow intimately. Other energy types, such as the generator builders, know how to take an idea and bring it into physical reality to convert energy to matter. The projector, on the other hand, has an affinity for energy flow. The big challenge 
in the life cycle of a projector is evolving from not understanding who they are and their gifts and the rules they have to play by in the world to actually stepping into their power as energy movers, as energy beings able to understand how energy flows. They are able to guide and direct energy in a way that doesn't necessarily create like the builders do. Instead, they move energy so that force is there for the builders to utilize. Projectors are like honeybees that go from flower to flower, pollinating so that there can be apples and peaches. Without the honey honeybees to do the pollination, nothing can be created in the physical reality. Unlike the manifester initiator who starts the process or reflectors who are the energetic barometers in society, projectors have a unique gift. I want to impress upon everyone listening that the biggest give you can give yourself as a projector or to your projector friend, partner, or child is to acknowledge the special power that each person has and their particular role as being pollinators, the ones that actually move the energy so that the trees and can make fruit and the flowers can be beautiful or things can become manifest in our world. Also, as an energy manager, projectors work in other realms, managing and moving energy to bring harmony to our planet. This work takes place on a non-physical level and could be a reason why they wake up in the morning exhausted. Hard nights work. It's not due to anything they did in, in this outer world. Instead, they are cleaning and organizing and restoring the planetary grid on an interdimensional level. Here's some tips to managing your energy. Recognize you are different for a reason. Appreciate yourself, love yourself. The world will not be the same if you're not in it. It won't thrive without you. Some people take this energy and turn it into an art form. Others take this energy and run a business. Still others oversee the restoration of the planet. Listen to your body. A projector needs to become discerning about managing energy resources and decide what is going to be most effective use of her energy. She creates a new definition of wealth and value. She operates on a different level than the material plane. What becomes valuable and worthy is not how many things she has, but having the time, the vitality, and the resources to do things that are most meaningful for her. It might be having friends that are truly supportive. Projectors do need some creature comforts though, and they need to have enough money. When a projector starts to appreciate and value herself, she becomes a giant magnet. Things just work out. People show up, people are drawn to her. Of course, each of us is a unique and how this all will show up is different. Suffice it to say that as a projector feels more comfortable in her own skin and she stops worrying about being accepted, fitting in and pleasing people and starts listening to her body, quitting before she exhausted and saying no if her body is tired, even if she really wants to do something, her energy will rebuild. When she adds into her life those things that fill her with joy, that are exciting, stimulating her curiosity and fascination with living, her vitality will return much more quickly. Her energy speaks for her. She will become magical to others. She doesn't have to do anything. People gravitate to her because they want to know her secret. This is the magical phase of this life. She casts away all the obligations, the shoulds, the self-sacrifice to heal herself. This is the age of wisdom. This is the age of happiness, fulfillment, and vitality, different from the undisciplined energy of youth. It is a reclaiming of lost power. Bit by bit, it can be achieved. Does this make sense to you? Where are you on your evolutionary journey? I'd love to hear 
how my theories of the life cycle of a projector resonate with you, please feel free to comment or ask questions. I'm wondering, have you ever noticed these cycles in yourself as you travel on your own personal journey? This is the projector's blessing. If you are a projector, I hope this leaves you with a new appreciation of yourself. Our soul speaks louder as we get older. If we have not been living true to its design, it will do things to remind us that we actually came here with a mission and that we have all the tools we need to live this mission. We are specifically designed to fulfill a certain role, be part of the fabric of cosmic life. So the more we step into alignment with our soul's agenda and the gifts we have been given, the easier energy flows and the more aligned we are to it. Part of the problem with energy flow, especially for a projector who doesn't understand their role in life, is that they're putting their energy in the wrong places. The divine or your higher self knows when we are not in alignment. In some ways, you could say that the projector is an instrument of the divine to bring people into alignment, into energetic alignment with themselves. We are all necessary parts of this big tapestry that we call life and that we call our planet. Each and every one of us has a role to play. If you would like to learn more about who you are as a projector, or if you have a projector in your life, you're invited to take a deep dive into what is your partic particular role to play in this world. I do an in-depth reading, starting with your Akashic record and your soul's profile and agenda for this life. Using your natal numerology, astrology, and human design birth codes, I uncover the details of your soul themes, identify the tools and gifts you're working with, together with the challenges and conundrums you face. Challenges are actually blessings since they offer opportunities for mastery and your soul's evolution. Once you understand your gifts and the challenges that you're dealing with, it's a lot easier to overcome them and turn those challenges into tools that make you strong. For example, one of our projector's major challenges is with energy management. If you don't have sustainable energy, the challenge is that you can't act like everyone else and all the attendant doubts and fears and self-judgments that come along with you judging yourself for not fitting in like other people. Actually, variable energy is a gift. It invites you in this particular challenge to become more conscious of your energy and how it's moving. It invites you to become more conscious of the energy of others and discern how and where to direct your energy for maximum efficiency. In the process, you get to learn about how to value yourself, how to accept yourself and trust yourself. And you end up sharing this with the world. Having variable energy is a really a big gift. And I have, it's been a while, it's taken me a while to appreciate it, but I have come to that point where I wouldn't trade it for anything. So if you would like to work with me, just go to my website, elainec.com. I offer an in-depth soul purpose reading. I also offer light language communication, which is another form of energetic healing by transmitting, transmitting the vibrations that your higher self can use to release blocks and limitations, to heal yourself, and to activate your purpose. Light language opens the door for whatever it is needed to, act, to be activated with you so that you can become who you are meant to be. Over the years, I have been studying with Karen. She has told me I, I am precious. I didn't believe her. It has taken years for me to finally acknowledge that yes, I am precious, that I have a particular gift to offer the world. So do each of you and each and every person, animal, tree and rock in our world. It took my writing my books for me to finally get it. Writing has been one of the most vulnerable activities I have done. Writing reveals the author's thoughts, desires, traits and attitudes about life. As I wrote, 
I questioned why, who my characters were, what aspects they expressed of mine. I couldn't help wondering about their design, the inner inherent challenges that they faced, not only outwardly, but inwardly, and how they handled them. Even in a fiction story, there's a quest for truth about one's role in life. I have been enjoying myself fantastically by working on this spiritual fantasy series. I've recently published the first book called The Rebel Healers in the Chronicles of a Fractured Soul series. It is a metaphysical fantasy story based on current life situations in our world, only set in, a, in another and told in a manner that is more engaging than just being lectured to, like what I'm doing now. In the book, the heroine has to discover her gifts so that she can do her part in restoring the balance in her world and to keep it from being destroyed. It is an entertaining read and also an inspiring one. You can go to Amazon and order the Kindle book or the hard copy if you like. You can go to laneymarie.com to find out more information about the books, my books. I'm almost ready to go through the publishing process with the second book in the series, and I've already started on the third. This is one of my gifts. It took a lifetime for me to actually step into it and to overcome all the self-imposed obstacles and fears of being seen. Because I listened to and honored my soul's mission, my life has become very satisfied and filled with meaning and adventure. An adventure I might not do physically, but my heroine and my characters teach me what is possible. And I, as a result of writing this, I have reached beyond what I thought I could do. My books have become my babies. They are what I'm birthing into the world. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to do my part in restoring the balance in our world. I invite each of you to step into the power of your gifts. You each have a role to play, no matter your de design. Let's all work together to restore the balance in our world. I am grateful for this opportunity to share with you and I look forward to engaging with you further. In parting, I want to leave you with a Leonini blessing, Bibiando Bandia, from book two of the Chronicles of a Fractured Soul series. It was from writing the first book that I became curious about how my heroine healed others and was guided to light language. I'd like to invite you to take some slow, deep breaths and allow your mind to calm and your body to relax. This transmission works on the quantum energy level. And like Reiki, your higher self directs what frequencies to use for your highest good. Allow the sounds and the words to flow in and around you. Simply notice what you feel or sense or into it. Feel free to leave me a comment. I'll take a moment to center myself and we'll start. So you can breathe while I'm taking this moment. Mesisya zagutam eyata. Qui satyan das se son japyatya menes un jatyamba kogota mite tanta tutya se pokonti si shas si shu son datyam wajanda kotaka may all the dense energies be transformed to divine love and light. We are in the mark of the tea, such a one titty, one titty, or go shitty at them. What that? We take the car. 
sean wandaka. E el zam shusha. Shisha tujipka. Mute wataka ete ot unda. Washu. Shashu. Yes, a to. Mean to go. Sisia to kapa. Mean near kapa mapatu tiasas. We an was a to tias sotan. Mean the catis to a giant to a pocket and to. Wonti, wonti kata, esata. May you step fully into who you are as a divine being. Siento jitya, wonti, atita, wenshan, wendai yase. Wenji janda akopa. In the Tianto Kisham Bacatis Shosata Sisatati Opa Wundacha Mimito do Pukutian to God Jejando do Eneta Eshotu Munina Gata Santa Ka. Let your heart be open and radiate. Divine love to the world. Activating divine love with others and others to heal our world. Mrs. Sam Uttitasho Nete Mutiata Ushantan Jo Diapakakusham Uyatite Uku Iti as a tatika pa Unda tamba kachishishos send yakapa mundish mundishandar wakatiaka shashashi wakatish shapashisha wakwa ite wota yepo wota yanta wako yan mishatite moto yata chucha isisisa one da 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 to walk down. I shall do it. Yet you go. See, do it. See, do it. What did the book up? Me day, May you be fully aligned and filled with divine love and light and fully aligned with who you are as a divine being. Se aku pui sens watia undia sistiam miantia sha vaisa Ozan, si si ando kusha si apates, minda koko, monta, si si ako, ne e a unda kakati. Nyan nyan ya maki anda kasi si tiyo da yu choko wongi diya nyan nyan ya koi ya nyan na kakati ni tiya tiya. Iya unu do nyan ya di ya cho cho pun te cho 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 cho. to be fully anchored in you. Mata, yeketako, miketishish, uku, jianda katapaka, metei, wenjakapa, ishish, wandaka, 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 shisha, shiasato, shisho, shisha, shisha, Mete, Utia Yaka, Mete, Mitaka, Mota, she's a mock, eh, and two.
ajatellaan kuvaa. Ei antaa kappaa. Sekama, senkin pitää, on tekesäs. On tapaar, hian takaa, sen tekaar, oo sen pakaat, sen pakaa sen piakaa, sen pakaa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take a moment, breathe, rub your hands together, put them over your heart. It's been a pleasure to be able to share with you today, to share my talents and my gifts and my wisdom. I look forward to working with you in the future. And I hope that I have made in a mark on your beliefs, have, have, opened up your eyes to see yourself and those people in the world around you with new eyes. That we are all fantastic. We are all marvelous. We are all precious. And we all have a job to do. And bringing harmony and restoring the harmony and bringing into a new paradigm starts with each and every one of us by each and every one of us living out the fullest expression of who we are, our soul and our soul's gifts. And by living out who we are and as, we, as a soul being in a human form, that is our true mission. That is our most powerful expression and we will have the most powerful effect on bringing the transformation our world needs. Until next time, I'm Elaine Curia. <laughs>